Hi and welcome to On Acting. Uh, in this video I'm going to be giving you some tips about how to find an agent in Canada. So the first thing you need to do in order uh, to get an agent is to put together an application package and it'll be something like this. So you're going to have a headshot uh, in a folder with a resume. Uh, you might, you might want to have a reel on a disc, that's always a good idea because that will allow you to uh, to show the agent what it is you can do and if you've got a business card you can put that in there as well. I know some people will put a second headshot in here inside the folder so that so you can show the agents two different looks or you can just put your cover letter in there. Uh, you always want to have a cover letter when you apply to a new agency. Uh, this, uh, after you've got your package what you need to do is actually find the agents in your city. In Canada the Union of Actors is ACTRA, the uh, Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television and Radio Artists. They have branches in uh, Vancouver, Calgary, Regina, Winnipeg, Toronto, Ottawa. Montreal, Halifax, and St. John. Uh, some of these branches, specifically the Toronto, Montreal, and Calgary branch, will have lists of agents on their websites. For the other cities, you'll have to find uh, you'll have to find them in different places. Uh, I've only actually um, acted in uh, in Quebec, Ontario, and British Columbia, so that's all I really know about. On the actual Toronto website, the list that they have, all the agents on it, are licensed by the EIC, which is the Entertainment Industry Coalition. They basically promote an ethical code of conduct. So all the agents of this list have signed this code of conduct. And uh, the EIC was started by AMIS, which is the Acting and Modeling Information Service. It was kind of a, a body that wanted to, uh, to work uh, in ethics and help people avoid unethical agents. So you should only apply to agents on this list. Now, if, once you look at the list, you realize some of the agents will have a T in parentheses next to their names. These agencies are also part of TAMAC, which is the, uh, the Talent Agents and Managers Association of Canada. So, uh, ideally, you want to start with these agents when you're, uh, when you're applying for agencies, but there aren't that many of them, so eventually you'll have to expand to other ones. Now, in BC, it's different. Uh, uh, at some point, there were two unions there. Uh, a second union split off from Actua, which was UBCP, the Union of British Columbia Performers. And at some point, production companies used to play them against each other to get cheaper talent. But now they've resolved their issues and they've merged. And UBCP now acts as an autonomous branch of ACTRA. So they're essentially the ACTRA of BC. And if you join them, you'll, you'll automatically be a member of ACTRA. Now, uh, the UBCP doesn't actually have a list of agents on their website. This is because in British Columbia, agents are, are uh, licensed and regulated by the government, by the Ministry of Labor, actually. So uh, the list of agents for, the, uh, for BC is actually on the, on the British Columbia government website. Uh, the thing with this list is that it really only gives you, it gives you the name, it gives you the address, and it gives you the phone number. But that's about it. There's actually a better list out there. It's a copy of this list on the uh, Vancouver Actors Guide. And it also has the websites for it and the uh, email addresses. And uh, this website will also have some resources for new actors uh, in, starting out in British Columbia. So it's, I find it much more useful. Uh, now, how I found an agent was basically I started with the TAMIC agencies, researched them online, uh, looked for reviews, spoke to actors and instructors, and made a short list of agencies I wanted to apply to and then just send them uh, packages one by one. So the best way to deliver your package would be in person. Uh, you might run into an agent and meet them right away if, if they run their, their offices by themselves. Or you might deal with the secretary. But either way, you should show up, be well-dressed, be, be uh, personable. And uh, if you make a good impression, then they'll probably remember you. If you can't make it in person, then that's fine. You can probably submit electronically. Uh, most agencies, if not all of them, will accept submissions via email or fax. There are some who even only accept submissions electronically and you can't uh, go visit them in person unless they invite you to do so. Um, but if you submit to an agency uh, electronically because you can't make it, then it's always a good idea to courier them a copy of your physical package so they can have it and actually look at it. Um, Courier is always better than, than just sending it to Canada Post because it'll get there faster, they'll take care of it, they'll take better care of it so there won't be damage or anything, and it'll make you look good. Um, the main reason you want them to have a physical package is, I mean, looking through it is, is pretty good. Like, they have the actual thing in, inside of them. It's a different experience than looking at a computer screen. But also a lot of agencies who take submissions and uh, take might 
For example, you're, you're an agency, you get a bunch of submissions, and there's some actors that you can't fit into your roster right now because you have too many actors that are that type or because they're, you don't know them that well, or maybe you're just not accepting clients now. Some agencies will take your package and file it away and keep it there until the next time they're accepting submissions, at which time they'll remove them and look at your resume and contact you. So uh, uh, it's a good idea for, for you to send them that. So uh, after you send your packages, you basically wait for them to contact you. If, if you haven't heard back in a week, you can follow up with them, call them, uh, or email them and see what's going on. If you, uh, if you still haven't heard from them after a month or so, you can follow up a second time if you want, but then it's probably better to move on. Um, you probably uh, will have uh, applied to multiple client, to multiple agencies at the same time as, as you should. So uh, at some point you'll probably hear back from one or multiples of them and then you get to, uh, to basically decide, meet them and make a decision accordingly and see who you want to represent you, right? Um, if that doesn't work, you can always expand your list. If your short list is too short, you can just look at more agents. If you get to you know, the unfortunate situation where you've applied to everybody on the list and you still don't have any agents, then that probably just means that you need something more. You probably need better promotional materials, more professional headshots maybe, or you just need to update your resume. Uh, get better references, get more skills, get more training, get more experience. We've talked about how you can uh, get some of these, get more references, get skills or training in other videos. You can refer to them if you want to. But uh, either way, what you should remember is to never get discouraged and to always keep trying. Uh, so yeah, uh, just put your package together and go out there and good luck.